If you told me back then, like, hey, listen to this guy or that guy pontificate for an hour and a half or two hours every day, instead of going to the studio and just working, I would have said, you know, you're out of your mind. Like, who the hell wants to listen to somebody else? It is morning here in New York. For some reason, I'm in the mood to do a video about mixing and at about your audio, I'm calling it your audio DNA. I uh, occasionally do a little bit of mentoring, which I think of more as just like hanging out, talking, discussing music, discussing music production, mixing, uh, even guitar playing. Um, and on Wednesday, I hung out with a friend of mine who I mentor, whether he let, knows it or not, I'm mentoring him. Um, and he, I started playing him some mixes of some things that I've been doing this past month. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of questions. And the thing that I get out of mentoring selfishly, and even the channel, is that when I explain things to other people... I get something out of it. it. It causes me to think deeper on what I do and what I'm doing. And selfishly, that's why I like doing it, I think. is because, um, I mean, I certainly don't like getting on camera and on a microphone and messing around with the internet and because I am uh, philanthropic or something like that. I do it because I get something out of it. Other people get something out of it. That's cool. Um, so he asked me, you know, the usual question, which is like, how did you get to the point where you know what, you, what sound you're looking for or what, how do you, how do you know if it sounds right? You know, and my answer in a lot of ways is like, it's just a matter of it sounding right to yourself. And where does that come from? Uh, in thinking deeper on it, I was like, you know, it comes from like, like I can listen to my mixes from 20 years ago and hear the DNA that, that I have in what I like to hear. Um, most of it's in regards to the low end, uh, let's just say the kick drum bass relationship and then the vocal some things to do with space, panning, depth. A lot of it is the vocal level in relationship to the music and the relationship between the bass instrument and the low end of the drums. I can hear that DNA. And I can actually, and I showed him some examples, I can trace those tendencies to other music that I didn't work on that I listened to coming up that I know is connect, connects the dots to where I got, uh, as far as what I hear and, and how I, what I'm comfortable hearing. Uh, I thought about like how in the beginning, um, going way back to when I was a kid, we would, you would ride around in the car with your parents or anyone who was old enough to drive, let's just say your parents, and you didn't have a choice on what you were listening to on the radio. The radio was on, your parents put it on, and you were listening to music that was happening. Uh, unless your dad wanted to listen to news radio, and then you were listening to the news. But not only were they dictating what you were listening to, but the radio stations were dictating what everyone was listening to. And we were all generally listening to the same things. So, you know, when I was a kid, El when Elton John was humongous, like everybody knew everybody, all the Elton John songs. They knew all the Billy Joel songs. They knew all the, the Rolling Stones tunes, Led Zeppelins, um, Fleetwood Mac, all these things. Everyone knew the same exact tracks and the same albums because there were there weren't a bazillion. There was no obviously. There's none of the stuff that we have today: streaming and internet and satellite and blah blah blah. So 
the limitations stamp your taste. I don't think there's any way that you could listen to a certain type of music over and over again and not have that affect the way you're going to hear things when when you are actually sitting at the faders and at the controls and going like, okay, I want this, you know, let me make this blend to sound like I like it. You know, hopefully you're going for something that you like initially. If you're not, you are, I don't know, making jingles in a lot of ways. So it, that's kind of like to me where the beginning of the DNA happened. I'm, I'm reading a couple of notes here so that I can keep it moving and you guys don't have to put it on triple speed. Um, then I started thinking about how I learned in the studio, how to learn when you're actually already in there. You're already making records. Um, like the idea to me now that someone would watch YouTube daily, every day, hours on end, trying to learn stuff about recording and production and music is kind of wild to me in that I think about it like our only influences back then were literally um, the occasional in inside info from another engineer or another producer, um, the, the tiny interview situation, you know, that you could find in a magazine where you're like, oh, wow, he's, he's, he's doing, he's working at that studio. Maybe that has something to do with how to get the sound. Um, or like your assistant engineer, occasionally you would, you would get a little sneaky info because you'd be like, hey, oh, you just worked with so-and-so? Like, what's he using on the, what did he use on the vocal, you know? And then you might try that. Um, but generally speaking, it was, it was more trial and error and more about experimenting on your own, um, testing, seeing what this, you know, referencing this, referencing that, trying to see if you could find the sound you were looking for, as opposed to finding out what someone else was going to tell you to do. I'm trying to keep this on the, on the rails. So Yes, is today a different world in that there are channels like mine or whatever uh, giving you an occasional thing about like what we do or did? Yes. Is that the way to learn? I don't think so. I think learning is by doing. I think you should be working on your own thing and refining your own DNA, your your own sonic DNA, if, if that's a term. Um the other thing I, that comes up with regards to that is the the mixes. I thought about some other stuff in that, like when I did a mix or any of my peers did mixes, um, let's just say a little while back before the before the workstation project studio came into effect, you did a mix. If it was a day or two depending on who the who the artist was and the client was with the project. Let's just say it was one day mix. You never saw that mix or track ever again. It went from you to mastering to the record shelves. Um, occasionally the client or the label or the artist would want a different approach to the mix. They were Unless it was a fix, like, hey, there's something, there's a, there's a breath that's like, you know, not supposed to be there. We could hear a punch on something. I mean, God forbid that that happened. I never had that happen. Like, hey, I hear a punch. Can you reprint that mix? Because that involved like booking the studio, recalling the mix. It would take six hours to, to reprint a mix that you already spent a day on. But anyway, that if they wanted a different approach, they wouldn't come to the same engineer and say, we want you to think entirely differently about the mix. They would just find a different mixer because I think people were, um, they had enough sense back then that 
that's the way a per, that's the way the mixer that's the mixer's sound and if you if you weren't feeling that sound that wasn't the sound you were looking for you found another mixer you didn't coax him into or her into mixing it like you hear it or like that you want to hear it because I'm here to tell you that like it doesn't work until someone can get to the point where they can do a little bit of chameleon mixing I want to call it like you know all right you want it to sound a little bit like that I can I can twist a little bit the the, the basic DNA is still going to be there you're still going to be like fighting that if you don't if you're not embracing that I hope I'm not talking too abstract for you guys, but does it matter to me? I don't know. Um, so I think I got that covered. If it might, it might take you a couple of times to um, turn this on double speed and listen to it a few times. But I think what I'm trying to tell you is, it's you learn, you get better by repetition, you get better by adding little things here and there um, that are along the way of building that intuitive thing. Um, that's my take on it. I'll probably come back to this at some point. I think I've sort of touched on this here and there at times. Uh, I will recap a little bit. We had the live stream on Friday night, which was crazy. It went five hours. I don't think I'm doing that ever again. I've said I'd never going to do the four hour one. I don't think I'm doing the, I know I'm not doing the five hour one unless something crazy happens. It's, it's kind of grueling in a way. Like I don't feel like it's grueling what I'm doing, but the next day I felt like, Oh my God, you know, what the hell was that? Five hours. The layer cake gang is kind of fun. They're, it's a fun crew. It's a great crew. Uh, we covered a bunch of things, including the new Kendrick Lamar stuff, which I labeled as, um, well, the, particularly one of the tracks, the first track that I found on NME, Dot com it's absolute trash to me i mean it's so abstract the beat that it's not music and that's not like a you know that's not like the the toe like screaming at the clouds and stuff like that it's just like it's atonal i mean what, what else can i tell you there's no chord there's no there's no melody i don't even know if there, there's a rhythmic sense to things but it's something not I don't even know how you would copyright it other than just like the vocals, the lyrics, because there's no, there's no melody or there's no composition. Take that as you will. Uh, what else did we talk about? A couple of things about some gear stuff, of course. Um, a lot about, oh, we even got into croissants. Croissants. As I said, it's an end of the week hang. It's a, hey, we're all done working for the week. Or, you know, sometimes that's kind of blurred to begin with, if you're, especially if you're working on Saturday or Sunday. But it's a Friday night. Typically, I don't have a session on Friday nights. Typically, I do my social life stuff other nights besides Friday nights because I'm not really a huge fan of Friday night in New York City. Uh, it, it was the day after... Thanksgiving. It was a little bit smaller of a crowd than usual. I think that's because of the holiday, but you know. So anyway, I will be back during the week. I might do another sneaky live stream like I did last week at night and I came back from the cigar lounge and turned up the machine and went for it. I gotta think of a crazy title for this one. Something to annoy the hip hop crowd. It's not a hip hop channel. And it's definitely not going to be. Uh, it is, I don't know what kind of channel this is. But I'm hitting the button, stopping.